Good morning, welcome to TMA. We have a great show for you, so stick around. Welcome to the morning after. I'm Kelly Novak. And I'm Cam Kingdon. And we are joined by a special guest this morning. Cam, who is with us today? Uh, this is a uh, mouse I found on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not true. We don't just pick up mice off the ground. Who is this really, Cam? This is uh, my friend. His name is Teddy Roosevelt, and I'm his mother. <laughs> it's a dwarf hamster. It's not a mouse that we didn't pick up off the street. Oh, yeah, we just said that. All right, so let's get it going. And All he just right. sits on his shoulder. Yeah. And he's going to be here the whole show. So here we go. So first up, we have the, you know, men's ice hockey team made it to the Frozen Four. Mm -hmm. We ultimately lost, but like he sent an email out to the university community uh, congratulating them. While the women's rugby team had a little issue with that because they actually had won an NCAA championship in the fall. So, and Leahy didn't acknowledge it, and a lot of reporters were saying that um, this was the first NCAA title that the school was going for, period, mm -hmm. um, which wasn't true. So, do you think the rugby team has a right to be upset by that? I think, of course, they do. I think they deserve recognition. So, I didn't know that they were NCAA, though. I think it's new, and I think they just joined. I think they just joined the NCAA, or it's like NCAA light, but either way, they just won a championship at the mm -hmm. end, like a national title in the NCAA. And um, there's no recognition recognition about that. Like, I didn't hear anything about that. Yeah. No, I didn't even know that. We had a women's rugby team. Yeah. It's funny, because the men's rugby team isn't even affiliated with the university. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, the new blue rugby isn't affiliated with Quinnipiac. That's why they can fundraise with that naked calendar because they're not affiliated with Quinnipiac. You've seen that, I, right? I have not seen that. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to. Okay, yeah, no, it's very entertaining. But I also think this opens up a whole other thing, though, about even clubs not being acknowledged. Like, the Chronicle mm -hmm. just won Best uh, Newspaper in New England. Oh, seriously? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Q30 Television, the station, won Station of the Year in 2014. I knew that. Mm -hmm. So... These are big accolades, yeah. and I'm sure other clubs and groups have these accolades, and we don't get university-wide emails. Do you think that's because the Frozen Four was, it was nationally popular? Like, it was on TV, it was... That's, I mean, that's probably a big piece of yeah, it as it was, well. Yeah, I think it's more popular than rugby, but I think rugby definitely still deserves recognition. Yeah, I think that's what it is more than anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it wasn't televised, the rugby game, because we all didn't really hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> I only knew because I'm friends with someone on the rugby team on Facebook, um, and someone made that meme with Lane, oh, yeah. and it's like, rugby team won a national championship? Like, whatever. I don't know. I agree. I mean, he should definitely think about the emails he sends in the future, mm -hmm. saying that men's ice hockey kind of put us on the map when... That's partly true, but it, it also, true, our academics are climbing and, mm -hmm. you know, rugby team kind of happened as well. I don't know. I mean, Quinnipiac is known for its uh, hockey, so it yeah. kind of makes sense. That's true, but next time you email the University Leahy. So mm -hmm. we're going to toss it over to Kelly, the other Kelly, with some entertainment news. Hi, this is Kelly Ledworth with your entertainment update. This was the week of baby announcements. Couples Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively and Ryan Gosling and Eva Mendez both announced they're expecting their second child. Lively and Reynolds gave birth to their daughter James in December of 2014. Reynolds recently told Details Magazine they'd love a big family. Mendez and Gosling also have a one and a half year old named Esmeralda. Earlier this week, it was also revealed Megan Fox and Ellie Kemper are pregnant. Fox is expecting her third child, while Kemper is expecting her first. Kemper revealed the, on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, she kept her pregnancy a secret, all from filming of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Now, speaking of celebrities that aren't pregnant, Taylor Swift graced the cover of Vogue's May 2016 magazine cover and debuted Bleach Blonde Hair. The singer talked about fashion and career and even a little bit of her romantic life with Calvin Harris. 
She posted an Instagram in, on Friday in a black jacket and glasses with the caption Leechella with her new lighter hair. That's all we have this week, so now back to the hosts. All right, we're back with little Teddy. Mm -hmm. How's he doing over there? He's just hanging out. He's fine. Do you forget that he was there? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget completely. I won't. So next topic we have on deck here is the new Uber for women, mm -hmm. kind of. It's not def it's not, that's not its official name, but it is called the Chariot app. And it's a, kind of like Uber for women. It's mm -hmm. only Uber, women Uber drivers or women drivers for this app. Um, they only pick up women and males 13 and under. Mm -hmm. So I guess like moms with their, like their kids. Um, and it was made by an Uber driver because apparently while he was on the job, you know, he'd be driving and he'd pick up, you know, like drunk people and they would try and like grope him and deal with other nonsense. So he's like, I can only imagine what female Uber drivers or even passengers yeah. might have to deal with. So this app launches tomorrow. So what do you think about this whole concept? I think, I think it's definitely a good idea. I feel like it's a little strange that it's only for women, but maybe that's because I'm not a woman. I feel discriminated against. Oh, but geez. <laughs> I think it's, they're, they're adding a lot of new safety precautions to it. Like the driver and the passenger are given a safe word. And if the safe word doesn't match, then you can't get in the car. Oh, so, I so think you don't just, you're not like Uber for this person. And they're just yeah. like, yeah. Oh, so if I said like watermelon and they said, or they say watermelon, it's like, and it matches kind of deal. Yeah. Then you can get in. But if it's, you just, it prevents getting into like the wrong car, even someone who's not even an Uber. Which is a good idea. Maybe Uber should do that. Yeah, I don't know. I Uber like... is so popular. I mm -hmm. understand like the allure of maybe this app because women, there have been issues. I know in like the fall, a girl, you know, got into what she thought was an Uber one night after Toads and had to fight people off and she almost got assaulted. So, Seriously? Yeah, it's an issue. Oh my God. So this could be attractive for like students here maybe who yeah. go out in groups of like with other girl friends so that could be a reason but i don't think i would switch to it to be honest and i am a woman i don't think i'll switch to it wait you are <laughs> oh my god i can't his sarcasm i can't even tell but um yeah i don't think i'll switch it i think i'm gonna stick with uber i think it's a good idea maybe mm -hmm. if it starts gaining some traction i'll like check it out and see what it's about but otherwise i don't know um, it's an interesting concept because people do feel unsafe, so I think it wouldn't be a terrible idea. I've never felt unsafe in an Uber, though. It's always been, it's always been pretty quiet, to be honest. I don't know. I mean, quiet. we're also maybe you're also really trusting, and you're also a man, that's so true. you can do yeah. you can walk around on the street at night, and not, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm just not sure that's necessarily true, but <laughs> I don't know. I. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe if it becomes popular, I'll download it. But I mm. think it's an interesting concept. But we're gonna toss it over to Erica now, and she has a little guide to Passover. Check it out. Thanks guys, Erica Bloomberg here with your guide to Passover. This upcoming Friday marks the first night of Passover. Passover is a Jewish holiday celebrating the freeing of Jews from Egypt. At the Seder, or feast, the story of Passover is retold interactively through food, with each piece of food representing something from the story. My personal favorite is the chalose. This sweet combination of apples, walnuts, cinnamon, sugar, and wine is typically eaten with two small pieces of matzah in the form of a sandwich. This symbolizes the mortar used by the Jews when they made bricks while enslaved in Egypt. Another item you may see at a table is a roasted lamb shank bone. This is used to symbolize the lambs that were sacrificed before the 10th plague. Another item, and this one typically isn't eaten, is the afikomen. This is a half piece of matzah that most families hide somewhere in the house for the children to later find. My family decided to tweak this a little bit and would place the afikomen on the center of the table for us to steal without my dad noticing. This Friday, I look forward to my nana throwing the afikomen at me from across the table. Now, if I can make it through the dinner without my dog eating it this year, that'd be great. Passover may come with many delicious foods to eat, but it also includes one very big dietary restriction. During Passover, no leavened bread may be eaten. Leavened bread, or chametz, includes bread, cereal, cake, cookies, pasta, and even beer. Typically, most Jews only celebrate the first two nights of Passover, so this isn't much of an issue. But for some, like me, they'll celebrate Passover for its entirety of a week. Looks like I'll be living off matzah and chorosa. Well, that's all I have for you today. Pay sasamea, and we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. This week's trending topic is hashtag that.
We are your source for Quinnipiac Entertainment News. The freshmen this year have stepped in and really just eliminated that problem, doing the right plays at the right time. I mean, it certainly seems like an uphill battle for this team, but I, Trisha Fabi is one of the best coaches at this university. Bobcats hosting Arizona State. We'll start with this power play. But she's strong. Good Lord, I saw her lifting one time. She could squat three of me. Like, oh, well, that, seven of me then. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we are joined right now by Alex Lamagna, the main stage chair of the Student Programming Board. Thank you so Hi. much for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, guys. Me, Cam and little Teddy. Where'd he go? He's, oh, he's in my Teddy's shirt. in his shirt cool. right now. I'm he's like cool. really trying to stay still right now. I can tell. There we go. Now he's on. The, okay, there we go. <laughs> so, Fetty Wap concert is this Friday. Yes. So, <laughs> what is the week before now going to be like? What is the prep going to be like? So, super crazy. Basically, we're just kind of finishing up some last minute stuff. So, we're getting the day of show schedule, when he's arriving, um, when the stage is getting here, how long that's going to take, um, the meet and greet times, security meeting times, uh, we're going to have a big volunteers meeting for Thursday night. Everyone who's volunteering is mandatory to go. Cam's going to be there. He's helping me with the stage. Um, so it's just some last minute stuff, but other than that, it's pretty fun and exciting right now. The planning has been done for months. Oh, excellent. So when, you know, can do students start lining up typically? When do doors open? So doors are opening at 6. Um, we're assuming that people are going to line up a little bit earlier because it's general admission, so there's not assigned seating or anything like that. So mm -hmm. first come, first serve, if you want to get to the front. Um, I don't foresee it. Oh, people lining up for hours before, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Maybe we might have some big Fetty Wap fans yeah, who, who want to get there really early. Yeah, right? I don't know. Camping out all morning with tents. Either way, I'll be there at like 7 a.m. So. Yeah, right. It's a big day. So then how did we like secure Fetty Wap? So after Fall Fest in September, I got to planning on Wake the Giant immediately. Like I gave myself two days and then I started planning it. Um, I contacted, we have a middle agent, so what he does is like help us, he's like the liaison between us and the people who represent like Fetty Wap or other artists. And I basically sent him a list of people that I wanted to get prices on and he was like, here are the prices and I have to see who fits in my budget and who's available on the day that we have. Um, and then we kind of worked it that way. So it's like a game with you like bargain back and forth of the price and stuff and then you find out that something that works and in November we agreed on a price for Fatty Wap and a day and it was all secure and I was like, yay! Did that student survey that you sent out in the beginning of the year have a big impact? It had the most impact. Um, so I sent the list of names that I thought would be popular first and at the same time we sent out a survey we got the survey results back and it was like everyone wanted a hip hop genre. So that mm -hmm. took some people off my list. And then a lot of people in the suggestion box said Fetty Wap. And I was like, it's got to be Fetty. So I worked really hard to bargain a price with them. Did we have any, were there other names or artists that you were considering or you can't like share? 
Um, I want to know. Like, I had, I mean, I had a list of like 50 artists, and I don't really remember the other artists that I had because the survey came back so soon, and everyone was like, Fetty Wap! That's the only thing, like, I focused on that. So I don't even remember who I put on that. And then the opener, too, how did you secure him? Because he's so, an up-and-comer, right? Yes, he's an up-and-comer on YouTube. So he's getting really popular. The openers are always smaller. They're not, like, always known. And so I kind of had a lot of, like, leeway with that. The My middle agent was suggesting a lot of people that I have never heard of. I happen to be obsessed with the opener. So I was like, oh, cool. I knew him from, he does Fetty Wap covers on YouTube. So I was like, oh, cool. Like, we could, like, kind of link them. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. went out for him. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. No problem. Very excited to see Fetty on Friday. I'm, very, oh, yeah, you're I'm honestly more excited to see the opener. Oh, yeah? Yeah, William That's Singe. Good. He's oh, so yeah. good. I'll have to check him out. I'll have to look him up on YouTube. Do and it. speaking mm. of YouTube, we're going to jump over to some tech news with Mike. Thanks, guys. Mike here with the latest in tech news. Facebook is testing a major change to its newsfeed. In addition to the traditional newsfeed we're all used to, there will be sections of the newsfeed dedicated to different news topics. Users would be able to select between world and U.S. news, sports news, and food news. Facebook said that people would like to see stories on topics they're interested in. However, this feature is still in the testing phase and it is unclear whether it will actually be launched to the public. 36,000 Verizon workers went on strike this past Wednesday. The walkout consists of mostly servicemen for business landlines and the Fios fiber optic network. The workers are fed up because the Communication Workers of America, their union, haven't had a contract with the company since August of 2015. According to the union, Verizon has outsourced 5,000 jobs to countries like Mexico and hired non-union workers for lower wages. Verizon responded by saying it is prepared for this strike and workers are in place to serve their customers. And innovations have been made in laundry. Yes, soon stains might be able to clean themselves. Australian researchers discovered a stain lifting solution that combines with sunlight to lift stains. The solution contains silver and copper particles which eat organic matter when exposed to sunlight, much like bleach. What's unique about this solution is that it continues to work even after multiple washes and works on cotton, polyester, and nylon. The hope, according to researcher Rajesh Ramanathan, is for textile makers to treat their fabrics with the solution. And finally, if you have a computer, chances are you have Adobe Flash Player running on it. Well, Adobe is urging Flash users to update their software in order to fix a, quote, critical vulnerability. Computer security company Proofpoint discovered the bug, which allows attackers to crash users' computers and install ransomware. The bug is currently in Flash for Windows version 20.0.0.306 or earlier. So if you're running that version and you're on Windows, make sure to update your software. That's all I got from the tech news from the tech world today. Back to you guys in the piazza. Welcome back. Teddy's still going strong on mm -hmm. Cam's shoulder. Definitely. <laughs> so on our next topic, we asked ourselves, how long could we realistically go without a cell phone? And Cam, how long can you realistically go without a cell phone? I actually tried this challenge. I made it uh, a total of six hours, and then I cracked. And I needed my phone. What did you crack? What made you crack? I I couldn't go without checking my text messages and my emails. It was you important. Went, what did you do for the six hours instead? I just sat there and cried. Oh, that sounds it was like awful. A great six hours. No. So what, how many texts did you rack up? <laughs> I don't remember, but <laughs> I figured out that I needed my phone for that. I. I don't really use it that much for games and social media, so I could probably go without that, but it's kind of necessary to have it on you at all times now. Yeah, to get calls from people, or you need to contact them, yeah. whether it be a call or a text or an email if you don't have your computer mm -hmm. by you. I use that my phone for all of those things, but I'm also, I think, a little more social media heavy than you are. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely don't place a lot of importance on it, but I do like to use it and check it. Like I yeah, always, definitely. I'm always up to date checking Snapchats. Always up to date on Instagram, like if I'm bored. Though I can go the day. Like right now, we're hosting a show. Obviously not on my phone. <laughs> um, if I'm waiting in a line, I don't, or I'm waiting for someone, I don't always have to be staring at my phone. I can sit in the in the uncomfortableness of not having someone around me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that always bothers me. It's like when you see people in the cafeteria, like waiting in line, it's like you phone. can't just stand there. You know what I mean? That's true. I don't know. I feel like if the challenge was how long can you go without 
checking social media. I feel like that would be more realistic because I feel like I could go, I, I could go maybe a week, maybe a week without checking social media. Really? I don't know if I could do that. Like I know people who like live and breathe by who checks everything yeah. and like my, you know, but I, I don't, but at the same time, I don't know if I could, <laughs> he's moving. I don't know if I could not check it. Mm. I definitely would need my phone though. I can put it down for maybe 30 minutes, an hour at a time. But like you said, I need to check a text or text someone about something or, and plus I don't, I have an Android, so I can't like text on my computer or something mm -hmm. like that, which is really annoying. Actually, I think that's fantastic that you can do that with an iPhone. You have an iPhone, right? Yeah, you can text on your computer if you have an iPhone. Yeah, you can sync it. What? Yeah, people in class always, I see them texting all the time. Oh, like if you have a Mac, you can use iMessaging. Oh, okay. do you not have a Mac? I do have a Mac. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe you should set that up. I think I have to. But I'm glad you can go six hours. I don't think I could go that long. I was going to say six minutes. I could definitely do six minutes. But, <laughs> but we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken and cheese for just over $4. Giant cheesesteak subs and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. QCash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. Good evening and welcome to Sports Pause. In the end, that we're here to win a championship this year. Jess Fontaine now has that. She's going to take a river off the post, but she's going to come back. And my number one, hold your applause, Bobcats fans, is Quinnipiac. All right, Victoria, you know what time it is. It's top five plays of the week. My favorite time. All TMA. How much do you know about the Real Housewives? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm Shanna. And today I'm going to test Shanna's knowledge on the Real Housewives. Or a lack thereof. <laughs> All right, so to start off, which franchise is the original? New York. The Orange County. Okay. That would be my um, second guess. <laughs> who created the Real Housewives franchise? Ryan Seacrest. No, Andy Cohen. Oh, I love Andy. Person, it creates everything. It was a good guess. No, Andy Cohen. That's like his like pride and joy. All right. What is a reunion? Oh, that's when they all come together and they sit in those chairs and they all scream. Yeah, they do. And they, they all, all scream wear at each other. Like lots Robert of people makeup walk and out. Lots yeah. Of spray tans and they all have huge hair and they scream. Okay. Which housewife has been on every season of the first installment? She is the OG of the OC. Okay, the only housewife I know is Heather Dubrow, thanks to my friend Catherine. So I'm gonna say Heather, but I don't think that's right. No, it's Vicky. Oh, all right. Vicky, of what? course, I know Vicky. <laughs> what prosthetic body part did um, got famously thrown in Real Housewives of New York? A leg. A leg. Oh my god, that was crazy. Okay, what did Teresa yeah. Judy shape flip in the Real Housewives of New Jersey? She's the one who just got arrested. Yeah. What did she flip? She flipped something. A table. Oh, she flipped a table. Okay. <laughs> the only thing I could think she would flip. Which housewife is the mother of famous model Gigi Hadid. Oh, um, Candace Hadid? No. Mm. Yolanda Foster. Oh, yes. I should have okay. known that. Which housewife was cast in Glee, The New Normal, and Celebrity Apprentice? Housewife was in Glee? Not Leah Michelle. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. 
She's the glee, only Glee person I know. Nene Leakes. Oh, okay. I do know her. I do know her. All right. Which housewife owns the restaurant Pump with her husband, Ken? Ken? Yeah. Candace? No, Lisa Vanderpump. Okay. Which housewife? Oh, Vanderpump Rules? Is that Vanderpump Rules. That's a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> Which um, housewife sings the jam at Tardy for the Party? Tardy for the party? Oh my god, it's so good. It's, it's my jam. It's my jam. Is it on Spotify or iTunes? Probably. It's on iTunes. Um, I have no idea. All right, Kim Zoliak. All right, and last question. Where is Sonia Morgan's toaster oven line? No one knows. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's still not there. All right, we are going to toss it back to the host now. Have a great day. So let's thank Teddy. For that little that little that toss to the, great toss. the package. He did a good job. Yeah. He definitely. Really I've never job. heard his voice before, but I'm glad I finally oh, wow. did. Yeah. Maybe he was just waiting for his TV debut. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so finals are approaching. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Which is, you know, the best time of the yeah, year. Yeah, the most fun. The most is had fun. During final week. Yeah, I agree. So while you're stressed or you want to procrastinate, we mm -hmm. have some TV slash movie recommendations for the best way to do that. So what are your recommendations? Well, again? what I recommend and what I'm watching right now is The Office. Mm -hmm. I think that's the perfect procrastination show because it's only 20 minute long episodes, so you don't waste too much time. And you get some laughs and some chuckles. Yeah, and you get more episodes in as opposed to like hour yeah. long episodes and it's just like you could just keep going. You don't even mm -hmm. touch it. And it's not something that you have to pay attention to that much, like a like a drama. Yeah, like, like, if, like so anything to follow really. Yeah, it's just it's just a bunch of funny people. I think I that's. Agree. I think that's the great, the greatest procrastination show. I agree. I think one of mine, uh, a Netflix show, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Mm -hmm. So that just actually season two just came out over the weekend. So I've been watching that, and it's just a goofy show. You know, Tina Fey, um, and another producer from Thirty Rock created it, and it's just this girl. You know, uh, she was in like a cult. By accident, she got kidnapped into this apocalyptic cult. Yeah. Oh my God. And then he told them the world's gonna end. And then finally, they rescued them 15 years later, and they're like, "Oh damn, there's a world." And now she's living life in New York City, trying to navigate things with her like the intelligence level she has, and like it's just it's that really goofy funny. and it's really goofy and funny. The jokes sometimes come out of nowhere, and it's just like it's like it's just a goofy show. But I think it's funny to have time go by. I haven't seen it yet. I'll give it a shot. No, you definitely should watch it. Any other? Um, I watched this movie Dope the other day, which was pretty good. I've That's heard on about Netflix. That. And it's on Netflix. It's now? on Netflix. What's yeah. that about? It's about this kid who accidentally comes in contact with a lot of cocaine and has to get rid of it without being arrested. Oh, that makes sense. That's called dope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> he's this nerdy little kid who is definitely not qualified to be selling that or be I mean, is anybody around qualified? that even. No. <laughs> He shouldn't even be around that, but he's just thrown into this awful situation and he somehow awkwardly makes it out. So I think that's that would be a good, funny, dramatic show. Yeah, and is it it's not probably not watch. super long, is it? It's like an hour. Like it's, an, it's not that long. Okay, as long as it's usually it's yeah. like over two hours, I'm like, I can't do this. No, that's way too long for a movie. And then I think my last recommendation of a Netflix show, House of Cards. House which of Cards, just, yeah. I think the sixth season just came out. And six I, seasons? Yeah, five or six, and I just finished that yesterday. Wow. And it was great. Um, it's a great show. It takes a little bit to get into it. Like, okay. I remember I watched the first few episodes a few times with different people, and that's how I stayed with it. Otherwise, it's very hard and very slow. But mm -hmm. it's gotten so much better, and if you just focus on it and stick with it, you're, like, not going to regret it. So. I haven't seen that yet. I've heard really good things. So now you have two Netflix shows to watch when you want to procrastinate right. for finals. I'm probably not even going to study anymore. <laughs> just watch no, Netflix. House of Cards is an hour long and it kind of takes some paying attention. So oh. maybe Kimmy. Maybe Kimmy your Smith. Speed. Yeah, definitely. All right. All right. So that's our show for this morning. So you can check us out on Q30Television.com or follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Q30Television. I love the Snapchat. You I didn't even you know follow, we had a Do you Snapchat. follow us on Snapchat? Because now you need to. I have to now, yeah. It's great. Like, I'm in it all the time. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm Kelly Novak. I'm Cam Kingdon. And Teddy, thanks for joining us today here. Where is just, he? He's right there. Oh. <laughs> Say goodbye. Everybody have a good day. <laughs>